The Hero Factory's reputation, considered an unparalleled success during its tenure, changed in 2014. Between 1980 and 2014, no city official nor their families had come under harm. The Hero Program's prime directive was to keep the people of the city safe, but also maintain the city's government infrastructure in order to prevent the city from descending into chaos. Until 2014, when all that had changed. 2014 was the year that someone bombed City Hall. 35 people had been killed, including the mayor, the police chief, and 7 out of 10 city council members. That year was a blemish in an otherwise spotless record of the Hero Factory. Brian drained the glass and placed it on the bar. With a scowl, he replayed the event over in his mind until his anger reached the boiling point. The hero on duty at the time failed in his prime directive and was subsequently kicked out of the hero program. The event resulted in the biggest embarrassment suffered by the organization since its inception. Confidence in the leadership team of the Hero Factory had reached an all-time low, and the Hero Factory nearly shut its doors that year. Brian threw a wad of cash on the bar and chuckled. A false tip. That's all it took to throw the hero off the trail of the real perpetrators that day. The tip regarding criminal gang activity positioned the hero on the other side of town, about as far away from City Hall as one could get. <sighs> gang activity, Brian barked. What a hoot that was. The bartender whispered to the old man and gestured toward Brian. In unison, they glanced at him nervously as if he were about to lose it and shoot up the place at any minute. He didn't give a shit what they thought. Frankly, he didn't give a shit what anyone thought. The gangs hadn't had any organized activity in years before that phony tip came in. If the hero on duty had his head screwed on straight, he should have caught on immediately. After the bombing was when the rumors started circulating. Some said the hero was drunk or on drugs at the time. Other rumors spread stating the hero was shagging a blonde stripper working down at the Double Deuce located near that side of town. Brian knew better. The reason was much worse. The hero on duty, haunted by his past, harbored a private vendetta against the gangs. Ghosts from the past betrayed the hero, like a poltergeist. The ghosts tossed the hero's good judgment aside like a piece of furniture, and the city had suffered because of it. Brian stepped outside and inhaled the crisp evening air. It provided a welcome relief from the smoke-filled environment inside the tavern. In the distance, police sirens echoed off of nearby skyscrapers and vanished into the night. Across the street, a hooker and her john huddled together in the shadows as money changed hands. Despite the many strengths of the hero factory, this side of town remained its weakness. This side of town was a cesspool of junkies, whores, and con artists. Corruption on this side of town was rarely noticed by a hero or cop alike. As he watched the hooker and her customer hop into a beat-up blue pickup truck and speed off, his thoughts returned to that day in 2014. <sighs> Heroes. He scoffed and reached for another cigarette. He shoved it into his mouth and retrieved the lighter. The red of the fire engine absorbed the yellowish color radiating from the sodium vapor streetlights overhead. Fuck em all. Brian turned his attention toward the next city block and shoved his lighter into his pocket. Stumbling a bit from his whiskey high, he shambled down the street before disappearing among the shadows. The bartender and the old man emerged from the tavern and looked both ways, hoping Brian was out of earshot. Convinced Brian was gone, the old man turned to the bartender. What the hell was that guy going on about? he asked. The bartender looked down at his hand, clutching the bat he retrieved from underneath the bar. He was never one to take chances and wouldn't start tonight with such a loose cannon running around. Zeke, you drank so much your brain is mush, the bartender grumbled. Don't you know who that was? The old man shook his head. You mentioned the name Brian Whitaker before, but it don't ring no bell. Do you remember when Soulfire was the hero on duty? The bartender asked. Zeke cocked his head but still looked confused, which only served to fuel the bartender's irritation further. He tapped the end of the bat impatiently against the pavement. Oh, damn your worthless hide, Zeke. You don't remember shit. The bartender lowered his voice despite the emptiness of the streets. As stated, he was never one to take chances. His eyes turned glassy as he recalled the memories of those days. He pointed the bat in the direction Brian had walked. Are you telling me you don't remember him? 
The old man concentrated for a moment. The act twisted his face as if he were sitting on a toilet suffering from constipation. Suddenly, Zeke's eyes lit up and the bartender dropped a hand on his shoulder. Exactly, the bartender exclaimed. Soulfire was the hero on duty when City Hall exploded.